the peace of the Lord be with you. Asumjue, enka mwenye na hejole. Ahanye, ntifafa nami. I welcome you to the Presbyterian Hour, a special ministry of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Beloved in Christ, let us join our hearts together in worship. John chapter 8, the verse 12 says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us all join our hearts together in worship in His presence. Amen. Let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We continue this morning's service in the name of God, who alone is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The hymn of praise is Presbyterian hymn numbered 41. Sacro Nidi near Seda Wall Dache Mayendu and Chevo and hearts give praise and honor to the name of the living God he has been a faithful God he has been a good God to all of us throughout the week he has sustained us we are counted among the living on this day and since he takes the living to give praise and honor to the name of the living God don't take it for granted this morning. Worship the name of the living God. Adore him, there is none like unto him. In the ancient of days, the king of kings, the lord of lords. The one who rules the affairs of this world, the creator of the universe. The alpha and omega, the lion of Judah. The one who fights all our battles. The great I am that I am. The 
righteous one. The holiest. We worship your holy name this morning. We give you praise. We give you adoration. We bow before your throne this morning. Oh Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. We give you praise and glory. When you came to earth, you showed yourself in lowliness and humility. This you did as a son of man who had nowhere to lay his head. You were rejected by the wise and the mighty. Yet you have been given praise of the mouth of babies. You have been accepted as Lord and Savior by those of broken and contrite hearts. We thank you that you have revealed your hidden glory to us. With watchful hearts, we would pursue the work you have given to us and be ready to suffer whatever is your will for us until you come in the clouds to establish the kingdom given to you by the Father. O oh, come, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us confess our sins before God. There is no hiding place before God. He is the all-knowing Father. Confess your sins to him. Father in heaven, we know that you are God of mercy. Before the foundations of the world, you have loved humankind. You sent your son Jesus Christ into the world to save us from sin and the power of Satan. Forgive us our sins and have mercy upon us through Jesus Christ, your son. Let us commit today's service into the hands of God. Pray that the Lord himself will lead us through the power of his spirit. That the word will come in its fullness and power. Now singing will fill the very presence of God. Our prayers will not be returned to us without answers. But the Lord himself will come to our aid and hear our heart cry. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, you are the savior of the world. We thank you for your great love in that you came down to this world, died upon the cross for us, rose from the dead for us, went up into the heaven, and sent your Holy Spirit to those who believe. And pray to your Father for us, and give us eternal life. Oh Lord, for your word we give you thanks. By it we are shown the way to eternal life and joy. We humbly ask that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts, so that your word will find entrance there. Give us trust, strength to resist the cunning attacks of the evil one who goes about like a lion seeking his prey. Amen. Our first Bible reading will be taken from Philippians chapter 2 verse 15. Please let's listen to the word of God. So that you may be innocent and pure as God's perfect children who live in a world of corrupt and sinful people. You must shine among them like stars, lightening up the sky. This is the word of God. Our second Bible reading shall be taken from John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. This is the word of the Lord.
The peace of the Lord be with you all. We are grateful to God for bringing us here. And let me say congratulations to the youth of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. Praiser is here once again. And we are here to launch Praiser and to affirm ourselves as young people of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana, to affirm our identity as Presbyterians, and to bring as many young people together so we can celebrate the goodness of God. It is good that we are all here. And so I preach to you to the glory of God, who is the Father. I preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Redeemer, and in the power and direction of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme for our celebration today has been picked from the general theme of the church. The theme for the church is Jesus, the light of the world. And the theme for today is the youth in the light of Jesus Christ. Now let me start by saying that in Ghana we have two seasons, two seasons, climatic seasons. We have the dry season and we have the wet season. But in other parts of the world, especially in America, Europe, and some parts of Asia, we have four seasons. Winter, spring, summer, autumn. And for those of you who really know this, you will observe that during autumn, the weather is very dark. You have long nights during autumn. And I must say that by 2 o'clock, 1.30 afternoon, 2 o'clock, it is already dark. And so you will have to put on lights in those countries during autumn. Because if you don't put on lights, you will hit your feet against something. That was the case or the background of this story, where Jesus said, I am the light of the world. It was during autumn, when it was almost dark most of the time, that Jesus decided to go into the temple to worship. But we are told that at the entrance of the temple, you have the foyer. And the foyer, and then you have the woman's wing of the temple. And there, because of the darkness, of autumn, they have huge lamps placed at the very entrance of the temple. So everyone will be aided by the brightness of the lamps in order to walk into the temple and in order not to fall. It is also during those times that the Jewish people celebrated what we call the festival of lights. Because then they will have to lead a lot of lights to aid life and movement in society. Now, the effect of the lights, that those huge lamps at the entrance of the temple and the various lights or lamps that they had in their homes, the effect was that it enables them to see their way very clearly so that with boldness, they are able to walk and maneuver their ways. They are able to walk and move in the midst of the light. Those who drive here, drive, will realize that whenever you have street lights on, you are able to drive with confidence. But whenever the street lights are off, you always have to take extra care to be able to maneuver your way. Now, another effect of the lamps, metaphorically, is that blindness is darkness. For if you are blind, spiritually or physically blind, you cannot see. And normally, because it is darkness, it discourages you does not give you the confidence to move forward. But what does it mean to be the light of the world, I must ask? First, for me, it means that Jesus is an icon of life. In other words, he is the one who draws all people to himself. Because he is the light and the world is full of darkness, people are able immediately to identify him. That when you come into this church, for instance, this chapel, during the nights and there is no light in here as we seated here and someone should lit a, a, a candle or even a, a, a match stick in the corner everybody will turn towards the light because of the presence of that light and that is what the Lord Jesus is saying that is the icon he draws people to himself with his light people are able to identify him and with his light people are able to move and to live their lives but that is not all. That with his light is able to, if you like, transform the negatives of life into the positives. So he brings love where there is hatred because hatred is darkness. And Jesus brings us love 
which lightens relationship. Then wherever there is doubt, his light gives us the faith to move on or to live our lives. Instead of death, he is the life. He has come to give us life because darkness is like death. Darkness is also like the various challenges we have in this world. You know, Jesus has said earlier on that in this world you have a lot of difficulties and challenges. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Sin is darkness. Greed, envy, injustice, ignorance, pride, arrogance, these are all elements of darkness. But when Jesus brings his light to us, they are able to speak into the lives of people to eschew all these things and to be right with God. But there is another meaning to Jesus being the light of the world. You know, in the Old Testament, God is light. When God said, let there be light, that was the beginning of life. So the Jews or the Israelites believed that God was light. In him, there is no darkness. So when they referred to God as light, so when Jesus also said, I am the light of the world, invariably Jesus is saying, I and God are one. I am like God. I have no darkness in me. I am the light. I am the one who has brought life and salvation to the world. Now let us move on and he says, he's the light of the world. The idea of him being for the world is also very insightful. That he is not light for a particular group of people. It's not light for only women or for only men or for only adults or for only young people or children. But he is the light of the world. I'm talking of the whole world. You are part of the world. I am part of the world. Our people are part of the world. Other nations are part of the world. Jesus is king over all of us. Hallelujah. No one group can claim monopoly over Jesus Christ. No one group can claim monopoly over God. But Jesus is the light of the world, including you and including me. In him, everything becomes very clear. In him, we know that we are brothers and sisters in Christ because we share the light that he brings to us. Now, it also means that all others who attempted to bring light into the world invariably became inadequate. So you have the prophets and the priests of old, the judges, the other people, all who decided to bring light turned out to be inadequate. It was Jesus who brought us the ultimate light. Our sufficiency is in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He is the adequacy. Our adequacy is enough for us. Someone has said that if you have touch lights and uh, lanterns, and you know what Osono means, you should find out. And Osono, your parents were using Osono those days. And Osono, and then all of a sudden, the sunlight should come up. Will you still continue using the torchlight? Will you still continue using Osono? Because the Lord Jesus, the ultimate, has come to our world. Hallelujah. Jesus is the ultimate light. Is the source of light, the departure for light, Jesus Christ. He alone reigns and is king over the world. So he brought us light. He himself is the light and is the source of every light. And what it means is that if you want to enjoy the life that Jesus gives, or you want Jesus himself to use you as a light for the world, then you must be connected with him. All the electrical bulbs we have here in this chapel will only come on, on if they are connected to the source of power. You cut the source of power and they will not work. And as Christians, you cut the source of power and it means we'll be bereft of spiritual power and direction. We will just be walking without direction. I'm saying that Jesus is the dependable leader, the one who will give us the power in order to shine our way. My brothers and sisters, what is important, however, is that in dealing with this Jesus, we must be truthful and we must be sincere. We must also exercise a lot of patience in dealing with him. 
Because there are many things that we do not know, many happenings that we cannot understand in dealing with the Lord Jesus Christ. Things happen in our life, and you wonder why they should happen in our lives. And at the particular time that they happen in our lives, but our lives are in the hands of God. So it, in dealing with us, or in him, with him, we need patience. Now, the people of old who dealt with him all had patience. Noah had the patience of putting up the ark, constructing the ark. After so many days, so many weeks, he had the patience to go through. Because whatever God said or prophesied was surely going to happen. You will need patience in dealing with your God. When challenges come in your life, when you do not understand things, I'm saying in patience. God is his own interpreter. Abraham waited for a long time for the promised child. And yet, he still worshipped his God. Moses was in the wilderness. He also suffered and stayed in the wilderness, being prepared for leadership of Israel. Because that was what God had said, that he was going to use Moses to lead the Israelites onto the promised land. The prophets of old, they all had to suffer. They had various challenges. For some of them, their own people proved too difficult for them. Yet they were patient, and they exercised patience with God. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 15, 16, Paul says that in this world, we have a lot of challenges, difficulties, and the world is a crooked world. The world is a contorted world or a twisted world. Things are not straight in this world. It is a perverse world. That is the world in which we live. Oftentimes we say to ourselves, Oh, it is good that we have such hope. But if you look at the way things are going in this world, it will still be tough. Especially if you have leaders in the world who do not have their heads properly screwed on. Then you know that we have trouble in this world. But the Lord says, Christian young people, Christian youth, and Christians, it is still in the contorted world that I will place you. I know the world is a difficult world, but I will still place you in this world. And the Lord is saying that the morning star will guide you through the difficulties of this world. My brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ, things are tough in the whole world. And things may prove to be even tougher. But you are still the children of God. The young people of the Presbyterian Church, you are still the children of God. And God is still interested in you. You are the young people of today. But tomorrow you will have again a lot of experiences in order to be leaders. But leadership starts today. It does not lie in the future. It starts today. When you get to know Jesus Christ and you try your best to be disciplined and to be a Christian and to follow the way of the light, I am saying to you, your future will be bright even in the midst of the difficulties of this world. You are still children of God. We are children of God, and we must be proud of this. How can we therefore live our lives? What is the application of saying Jesus is the light of the world? What does it mean to you, the young people of today? What it means is that Jesus is light, but you also have a role to play to ensure and affirm that Jesus Christ is light. Now, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. But elsewhere in Matthew, he says, you are the light of the world. How do you reconcile the two? Jesus, the light, and we, the light. We are the light of the world. And Jesus Christ also says, I am the light of the world. As far as I'm concerned, Jesus is the point of departure for the light. If you leave him out, you cannot have light. He's a source of light. And that in him is true light. That is what the Bible says. The originator of the light, which is life in this world. He is the light, yes. But because we are connected with him, his light shines on us. We are the radiance. People see us. And they see the way we walk, the manifestation of the faith we have in the Lord, and they give glory to God who is in heaven. So it is you they will see. That is why the Lord Jesus also says, 
You are the light. We are the light. Young people, young Presbyterians, you are the light of Ghana. You are the light of the Christian world. Let people see you and let people give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Every light is supposed to have rays. And so Jesus is the light, but we are the rays. We are the radiance. You cannot see the light in its true form, but you can see the rays of the light. And that should be enough for you to know that the sun is there. Functionally, I'm saying you can only be effective if you are connected with the sun. You can be effective only as a Christian if you are connected with the Lord Jesus Christ. So it is not just the knowledge of it or the theory of it when we come to the church. It is how do we translate our understanding that Jesus Christ is the light. In our homes, is Jesus Christ the light because of us? In our workplaces, is Jesus Christ the light because of us? When nobody is watching, is Jesus Christ the light because of us? All of us, all of us must be light. And that is the application of Jesus, the light of the world. But Paul is saying this. Paul said, you have a lot of troubles, contorted world, as I have said. But you be blameless. You, the Christian, be blameless in such a world. Be harmless in such a world. Be pure and be uncontaminated. Let no one speak evil of you because you are a young person. That was exactly what Paul said to Timothy, the bishop. Let no one speak ill of you because you are a young person. But let your youth be the energy. Let your youth energize you to be the true light of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look, in our world today, I'm saying it is a difficult world. People are so unashamed even when they are doing the wrong thing. Those days, people hide to sin. They hide to sin. Today, people even profess this on radio or declare this on radio. Naked women and naked men in the newspapers. What examples do we give to the world? The Presbyterian young person must be the disciplined young person. The young person who will not be found wanting, but the young person who will do what is right, whether somebody is watching or whether nobody is watching. The Presbyterian young person will always call attention to what is wrong and will also always be an example. Somebody was telling me that he, when he was a young person, he was a Presbyterian. And his friends who were not Presbyterians, their parents were saying that they will always thank God that their children have befriended a Presbyterian. Their children have befriended a Presbyterian. You should be that Presbyterian. That people should be friends and parents should be happy that you are a friend to their own children. Let us not attempt to move with the world in terms of evil in the world. I'm saying that sin is now everywhere. Sin is now attractive and there are people who always rejoice in it. Do all things in this world and remember that Christ is the light. Again, Paul says, let us not be complaining because of the difficulties of this world. No, let us not be complaining. Let us not be like the Israelites who will walk through the wilderness and be complaining all the time. They will complain for food. They will complain for time. They will complain for water. They will quarrel with Moses. Don't be like the Israelites of old. Trust in the light that will go ahead of you and follow the light. If you follow the light, you will never go wrong. Finally, I want to say this with you. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young person stay pure? And it's simply by obeying the word of God. If we obey the word of God, Presbyterian young people, it will be well with you. You will keep your ways clear and you will be doing what God requires of you. Micah, the prophet Micah, chapter 6 and verse 8, has put it in another way. He defines Christianity in a very simple way. And I'm always reminded of that simple way. He says, he has told you, all oh man, what is good and what is righteous. What the Lord requires of you, and it is act justly. Be fair to all people, number one. Show mercy 
to people who do not have or who are in trouble. Number two and number three, walk justly and rightly with your God. May we walk aright with our God. May we pursue what is just and fair wherever we are. And may we show mercy to whom mercy is due. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We greet you in the name of God, who alone is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I'm here to give a brief narrative of the presser. But before I do that, I would like us to listen to a very short jingle, which will give us an idea of what we are about doing. Beloved in the Lord, Presa is the, one of the biggest gatherings of the young people of the Presbyterian Church of Ghana. In this gathering, the young people come together to think and deliberate about current issues that are affecting the church and the nation. In deliberating about it, we think about ways that as young people we can solve those issues and make impact not only in our communities, but in the church and in the nation at large. In 1992, I guess, the first presser happened. By the grace of God, this has continued. And it happened again in 1997, 2002, 2007, 2012, and 2017, and now we are in 2022. It happens every five years. And we are gathering about 2,000 to 2,500 young people this year by the grace of God to Ekropong Grace Presby. In doing this, we as the young people have affirmed that with the current happenings in this country and in the world, when it comes to Burton, when it comes to LGBTQI and other issues concerning job search and career, this year we would want to think about these things. And in doing so, we know that after this, our impact will not be only personal, but it will affect our congregations, our communities, and the nation at large. And so we invite all of you this year to help encourage the young people in all congregations to join us as this year we celebrate Presa and our heritage as a church. I am grateful to you, and may the Lord bless you. Chair person of the West Presbytery, Directors, national directors at the head office, director for clan and director for administration, the lay rep for the Gawest Presbytery, colleague ministers, ladies and gentlemen. God bless the Presbyterian Church of Ghana with praise. And for many years, we have celebrated praise. I'm happy to say that many of the ministers who are now senior ministers were part of praise many years ago. Today, it is the turn of the young youth of today. And I'm happy for the Presbyterian youth. The Presbyterian youth is a well-groomed youth. The Presbyterian youth is not a docile young people. The Presbyterian youth, well-groomed and all-rounded, God-fearing and have respect for all people. The Presbyterian youth is a disciplined youth. And this is why the church will always want to affirm the young people we have in every generation. Presa is to affirm the identity of the Presbyterian youth. Presa is to say to the young people of the church that the whole church is behind you. That will support you with prayers, will support you with resources to ensure that Presa becomes a real source to the glory of God. And for all the planning that has been done, Everything that has been said on behalf of the whole church, I stand here to launch praise. And I do so in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May God's name be glorified. Amen.
Brethren in the Lord, we thank God for his message through his servant. Indeed, his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It is our prayer that the word of the Lord will continue to shine on our path and lead us, nurture us in him so we can grow in the fullness in the Lord. Amen. Brethren in the Lord, we want to specially acknowledge all our donors. For the past years, your donations have gone a long way to sustaining this program on air and reaching so many people across the world in fulfillment of the Great Commission mandate in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20. We say, God richly bless you. Again, if you also want to donate towards this worthy cause, you are encouraged to do so through the account details on your screen. And we shall duly acknowledge your donations. Beloved in Christ, for any counseling needs, please call the numbers on your screen and we shall be ready to pray with you in your Christian journey. The Lord bless you. And we'll meet again next week on the same channel at the same time. Stay blessed. And unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit ourselves. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, I commit all of you. Brethren, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord God of Israel lift up the light of his countenance upon all of us and give us his peace, his real shalom, even now and evermore. Amen.